Hello and welcome to week eight. Um, this week you'll be beginning to draft your creative nonfiction essay. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how you can go about starting your draft and what will be expected of your draft. Um, next week is our last week before spring break, so you will not have work due over spring break. You can continue to um, work on your creative nonfiction essay. Um, and as always, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to email me. I did have a phone conversation with India, um, and you might notice I sent out a an update on how you can change um, if you were unhappy with your test grade, how you can improve that. So please try to contact me soon um, if you'd like to do that. And also your midterm grades will be posted before the end of this week, so look for those uh, shortly. Okay, so I wanted to talk first a little bit about shaping your story. Um, there are no real rules to creative nonfiction writing. There's no set way um, to go about writing it. On the next slide, I'm going to show you some examples of possible structures or forms your story might take. Um, but if none of those appeals to you, feel free to strike out in your own way. Um, you can even use some poetry. You can mix genres. Um, you can do whatever you want with this because ultimately the only rule is that it should be in your own personal voice and it should be unique to your perspective because that's part of the reason why people enjoy reading creative nonfiction in the first place. Um, one way to kind of get at your voice or, or find the structure that you want to get at is to write the story out full. Um, some of you may have done this already with the previous exercises that we did. You may have located the story that you wanted to tell. But write the story out full with all of its parts, all of the information, all of the backstory, everything you think is important. Um, and then you can use that almost like clay and shape it from there uh, by rereading it for the most interesting part and to find the narrative arc. So where does the um, you know, exposition start, the rising action, the climax, the falling action? Is there that narrative arc in there somewhere? And can you locate that and pull that out of um, all of the material you have around the story? Another thing to do is to see your eye as a character. So find that distance between yourself and the eye in your story will often help you find the shape. Um, if you're able to back up from it and see the eye as a character separate from yourself, you can ask yourself questions like, what has the eye learned? Um, is the eye then dynamic? Do they change throughout the course of the story? And is the eye a rounded character? If you were not yourself, would you see the eye as being dynamic and round? And then how can you shape your story or expand on your story? or form your story in a different way to get at this um, purpose. Another thing to think about is scene. So set the scene in your story. Um, imagine if a movie camera that you can kind of move through various scenes and set those um, with language and description and imagery to pull your reader in to the environment in that way. So another aspect of this is summary. So summarize a backstory, but don't info dump. We talked about info dumping a little bit with fiction. Um, that's when you suddenly stop your narrative in order to dump in a bunch of information. And oftentimes this will throw the reader out. Um, I'm sure some of you have read something like this where all of a sudden there's just a mass of information that seems kind of out of place put into the center there. So think about the way you can kind of summarize any backstory that's important, um, but do it in a narrative way so that it keeps the pace of the narrative and isn't kind of a shock to your audience in that way. And then also an important part of creative nonfiction is the aspect of reflection. So we're not just telling a story about the I. We also, because we are the I, we embody the I, have this power of looking back on the story from our vantage point and reflecting about what this story means. Um, so the reflection is really your interpretation of what has happened in this story. So after you write the story, kind of as you're rereading it, reflect on it. What, what deeper things have you learned from this? What could your audience or you take away from this. Um, so once you've done all that and, and you have this raw material, and if you're thinking about forms, um, I've given you kind of a list here of forms, but as I mentioned, you don't necessarily have to use one of these. Um, 
But if you feel that one of these fit your narrative well, then go ahead. So chronological obviously goes through time in an even way. That's kind of the more typical story structure of the narrative arc, the beginning, middle, and end. This happened first, and it led to this conclusion. Um, the next form is segmented, so you may jump around in time. You may have um, a small segment from when you were five and then jump to when you were 15 and then back to when you were seven. Um, or, you know, segments from different periods of time if it's, if it's not directly about yourself, for instance. Say you're writing about your, your grandfather, you may go back and forth with different segments of things. Um, another option is the framed story. So that's where maybe you start in the present and then you go to the past and then you come back to the present. So the frame is like the same thing at the, the beginning and the end and then the same thing in the middle. Um, another option is the compare and contrast. So you could um, compare and contrast your life to a, a movie star or something or, or, a, or another aspect of your life or um, two, you know, different research things that you're studying, compare and contrast. Um, the next one is the epistolary. That is a series of letters. So you could write it with that form through, through letters to maybe your grandmother or somebody else. Um, the next part is a lyric essay, which works similarly to a lyric poem. And that's focused on Im Im imagery and emotion. Um, and so through this, it won't be as narrative. There'll be more images that try to evoke um, a certain image. So maybe different opposite images kind of juxtaposed to get the audience to feel a feeling that you had in a specific moment. Then also you could do multiple perspectives where you might look at the same um, event through the eyes of various people. Um, and then multi-genre where you might blend some of these genres where you might bring in poetry or art or um, photographs um, or even video to kind of bridge over um, various genres to, to tell your story. Um, so start writing this, start thinking about this. Um, remember to review the things you've read and it might be helpful for you to look at the forms that those pieces take, especially the ones that you particularly admired. Um, you don't have a blog post due this week. Um, you'll just have to work on your story. But please do remember to post on the discussion board using the website to find um, a prompt which appeals to you. It's pretty similar to last week. We're going to keep doing these invention exercises. And then also remember to respond to two peers. So again, please contact me with any questions and happy writing.